when it comes to uh, reviewing these shows that, uh, if not at first, certainly becomes quickly obvious that they're not very good <laughs> and uh, the different circumstances initially for Pop Culture Breakdown, but I came this far, I might as well go ahead and see how it ends. Uh, in particular, uh, the Wiccan character that Billy is supposed to become I, and whether the MCU can survive long enough for them to get there and obviously the, the groundwork that they've laid for it for a young Avengers uh, series or whatnot there's just no chance it'll be anything akin to what the original story was and so I guess that's kind of pointless. On the other hand, the Aubrey Plaza character, which the rumors are all true, she is the incarnation of death uh, for the Marvel Universe. That was uh, no big shocker, but that was uh, supposed to be the revelation of this latest episode. Um, and all that. So I guess there's not really much of a justification for watching it. But, but anyway... Uh, when I'm watching these shows, every now and then there'll be an episode that I can say, well, this one is probably the, probably their best one. It's not saying much at all. You know, it's not a turnaround. But it just goes to show that if there was just a little more effort and care, uh, and especially more into relation of the source material, but they're so far afield in so many ways, I you know, it, it just forget it. It's not happening. And little Easter eggs here and there, names and whatnot, is rather irrelevant to a certain point. Uh, I mean, first of all, this iteration of, of death is more akin to Neil Gaiman's death character from Sandman. At least Aubrey looks more the part. Giggle tee hee. Uh, but in the Marvel universe, uh, Death was always represented at, as a sort of female form of the Grim Reaper. That's she was in the dark purple hooded robe and uh, was a skeleton inside. And uh, she would appear here and there when they would have these super cosmic encounters and whatnot. And of course, famously, Thanos was in love with this uh, personification of death, and uh, that was his main uh, motivation. Uh, rather than what they did with this population control obsession he had for the movies, you know. Uh, so now here she is. I don't. There's rumors now they're going to bring Thanos back. Is he going to be in love with Aubrey Plaza? I don't know. Uh, and of course, for the purposes of D plus, uh, she's got to have uh, a lesbian relationship with Agatha. <laughs> So and it's like they were a real couple, you know, at some point. It's uh, that's just not the character. There's very little to the character. You wouldn't have even had to have hired anybody to play the role. It could have just been this figure that stands there, you know, cuz from from the comics that I read, maybe they changed it over the years and probably by now they'll rewrite it entirely so that she's some wise cracking uh, you know, uh, a character and all that sort of thing, but that was never the case uh, originally. But you know, it's Disney Marvel now. So anyway, this episode focuses more on the fortune teller character whose name escapes me, but she's the one who could see the future. And they do choreograph this episode and using in bizarre things that happened in earlier episodes. And now it all fits because uh, it's not like she casts spells or anything. She does read the tarot cards and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but she was just born with this ability, perhaps a mutant. Uh, but that, I don't know if they'll get into that, but you know, whatever, why not? Uh, she, can see the future and she experiences it where she's sort of pulled from different points in her own life and so it messes with her a bit to where she seems like you know someone with dementia or whatever but this has been going on since she was a child so you get images of her from her childhood and throughout the show and stuff like that and within this episode so uh, she comes to out of this realization uh, not realizing that her future self has already been present and telling the others what's going on. But it's 
they do a good job of putting it together and that working out. And also that this is her her final uh, battle. This was uh, the end of her life in this uh, episode. And she sacrifices herself to save the others and all this sort of thing uh, within it. And so I, odds are this is it. This is as good as it gets. <laughs> Whoever worked on this particular one uh, did a better job than the other. It's still the same thing. They go to another, well, not a house this time. It's a castle and all this sort of stuff. As soon as they walk in, uh, Agatha is like the Wicked Witch of uh, Wizard of Oz. Billy is dressed up as uh, Maleficent, you know, that lady who can turn into a dragon. And uh, Angelina Jolie played her. You know, she, she wore the outfit better, of course. Uh, the other characters become uh in fact a fortune teller lady looks like the good witch and uh i'm not sure what witch uh what's her name is supposed to be but uh and then they drop a line that oh we can worry about the stereotypes later and uh, uh, you know what it's stupid costumes from their disney characters but nevertheless well not wizard of oz of course but whatever that's how they're presented and they've got to deal with the uh, tarot cards and if they get it wrong these these swords fall from the ceiling and you know could kill them yeah well eventually the fortune teller lady well she resolves everything but in the reveal of it of course draws the card of death and then that reveals that Aubrey Plaza's character is the incarnation of death and so there you go there's your big oh my god but you know they pretty much knew it all the clues were there uh and uh, i guess her romance with agatha ended because she had to take the soul of her agatha's son <laughs> yeah she said hey i was just doing my job you know <laughs> yeah whatever anyway uh, so instead of Thanos having the hots for death, it's uh, Agatha. Yeah. Well, whatever. So uh, there you go. And uh, it's this is probably it. This is the one episode. It's like Doctor Who. Well, there really wasn't a good one. Not even the surreal seventy-five or seventy-three feet one. I guess there was no real point to it. It doesn't explain itself. It it had the trappings of this cool surreal story and then there was really nothing to it so this is actually better than that there was a point to it so imagine that <laughs> uh, uh star trek strange new worlds had one in their second season one good episode that's it <laughs> but uh jody's doctor who had at least uh, one per season, I guess, if I'm remembering correctly, but doesn't matter. But it, yeah, it was a you know it destroyed itself anyway. But nevertheless, you say, hey, look, you see, if you'd have kept in this, you'd almost have something. You know, yeah. here, uh, basically, just in the how the, the episode structured uh, and all that is uh, was not bad. That was done fairly well. Doesn't matter the overall show stinks and it's all very stupid and doesn't take itself very seriously at the same time seemingly trying to I, you know it's weird but anyway i'm thinking that's it i don't know if there's one or maybe two episodes left what have you i can't remember but at this point uh one episode that just seemed to accidentally stumble into a fairly decent plotted episode uh, we'll do next to nothing uh, for it um, and uh, well you know it's a lot of waste of time money uh, not as too much money on some others you know, this one but it's you know fine for what it is I guess but uh, but also the talent I mean uh, some of these actors I think could do pretty good certainly Aubrey you know, she's always impressive but here just wasted utterly wasted we keep having to watch this you know well you don't have to of course <laughs> and you don't because 
I did it for you. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's the only good episode, but it's no point checking it out because you'd be lost because of the other episodes, and you don't want to sit through those. So, yeah, that's a shame. <laughs>